as a musician, you can have lots of different kinds of goals. Uh, one is to be the best at your instrument, like the technically perfect fastest shredder on guitar, or the tightest rhythm guitarist. For me, there was a kind of instant allure to writing my own songs. But as a beginner, how do you even get started? I think there are as many workflows as there are composers or musicians. But I'm going to share some of the stuff that I do that works for me. And maybe you can take some parts of that or all of it and make it your own. And getting started on writing your first song. So for me, two things helped a lot. The first one is realizing that there are structures to songs, even metal songs. For more standard metal songs, you can use the classic recipe that pop songs are using. So the components of a song is the verse, it's a chorus, there's a pre-chorus, that's the thing in between the verse and the chorus, there's sometimes a bridge and a solo. And then you use those building blocks to put together a song. For me, metal songs always start with the first riff that becomes the verse riff. But how do you come up with that first riff? Uh, sitting with a guitar in hand, I would basically just come up blank, uh, noodling away, but nothing would come out of it. Maybe you can just do it by ear. Just sitting with a guitar in hand and finding a cool riff, um, that's great. That didn't work very well for me, so I had to find tricks. One stupid trick, um, and you know, stupid tricks that work aren't stupid, was actually singing a riff into my phone. So I would turn on the voice recorder and I would just sing a riff that I came up with. 50% um, of the time it turned out it was a Metallica riff or some riff I've heard somewhere before, but the other 50% actually turned out pretty cool. So I would listen to my own stupid humming into the voice recorder and then map that out onto the fretboard. And sometimes those riffs turn out really cool. Uh, the other way is actually using music theory. Um, we're gonna stay basic, but... So what you can do is pick a scale. For metal, it would regularly be a minor scale. Uh, in this case, we're gonna use the Phrygian scale. So the Phrygian scale is just a variation of the natural minor scale. It has one note mood, but it's a basic minor scale. It looks like this on your fretboard. So all of these dots belong to the Phrygian scale. So when you make a riff, feel free to use any of those in any order or in any rhythm until you find something that's cool. Um, you can always, of course, step away from the scale. You're not bound to it, but if you want something that's, that kind of sticks and that's going to work, start by using the scale and then you can vary it later on. So let's get started. Let's use the Phrygian scale and see what some riffing can, can do. Can we find a basic verse riff? We open up a new project in Reaper. We create a track. Um, this first track is going to be a drum track. It's going to be a scratch track, nothing that we're going to use for the final song. It's just going to be kind of a metronome, but that's easier to follow. Because at least me, I have troubles playing uh, to a metronome. I find it so much easier to play to a drum track. So we're going to create a super simple drum track. Um, we start by adding a drum plugin. Like that. Uh, and then we add just um, one measure of uh, MIDI. So this is the MIDI editor. Um, this is now a piano roll, but what we want is named notes. Uh, that are the names of the, of the drums. And we can load that into Reaper by uh, selecting the MIDI editor, then file, and then note names. So load, load note names from file. And I have um, a map for Superior Drummer. Um, there are maps for basically any drum plugin you might be using. So loading that and then switching the view to no, named notes. So here's the kick and the snare. So we can add a kick. And the snare. That simple, or we can just add another kick. 
Yeah, that's fine. Um, I think the tempo, um, the song tempo at 130 is a little bit low for a metal song, so let's put that at 160. Um, to see what that sounds like. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, and then we can just stretch this out, uh, this MIDI item, and it will repeat. So we want a pretty long way so we can just riff away without it ending on us. We'll set the region for loop. Uh, the loop is activated. And then we add um, our guitar track. Uh, we can name this track so we know what it is. Drums. And we'll add the guitar track. Rhythm. Um, we need a plugin on that for it to make some kind of nice sound. We'll go with this, the 40 nameless suit, which is great for rhythms. After this noodling, I've decided to go with this riff. On its own, it's a little bit dull, so let's try and find some variations. Maybe alter it every second bar, and maybe the fourth bar of the verse can be a completely different kind of riff. Something like this. Once we have two decent takes of this riff, we will cut them up and put them on two subtracks, one to the left and one to the right. So this track will be the right one, pound hard right, and this one will be the left one, pound hard left. This is where our riff begins, so let's cut away the silence at the beginning. And this one will be our left track. Uh, so we can listen what they sound like together. And here's where the first repetition ends, so let's cut away the rest of it, like that. We'll make it a color, so we can easily identify the verse riff and, and tell it apart from the other ones. Like that. So now we have the verse riff, and we can just copy it to another bar. Um, in the final product, you would never do this, just reuse the same take over and over. But now we're in like composition and arranging territory. So now it's fine to just use these scratch recordings. Um, and when we're finishing the song later on, we will record all of it again. Next, let's try to make a chorus. So a chorus could basically follow one of the classic chord progressions, um, like one, five, six, four for a classic rock song or a, or a pop song. For a minor scale like C Phrygian, first, fourth, fifth, and seventh are minor or variations of minor chords. The second, the third, and the sixth are major chords. But since this is metal, we don't care about that. We're going to do power chords. And power chords don't have minors or majors. So this translates into the chords of the Phrygian scale being C, C sharp, D sharp, F, G, G sharp, and A sharp. How does that translate into the chord progression 
of the chorus that I was talking about. For this song, I'm going with a slight variation of that classic chord progression, and I'm choosing one, six, four, five, which in C Phrygian means C, G sharp, F, and G. If you're playing in standard E tuning, you would probably choose E Phrygian and not C. Then the chords would be different, but the tabs, the positions of your fingers, would be exactly as shown here. And now that we have two recordings of the chorus, we will also color those in, uh, in the same color. And then we will place them on their separate tracks, left and right. We can have a listen to what they sound like. In the part about song structure, I also mentioned that you usually want a pre-chorus, so let's record one of those as well. So let's do some palm muted things. Uh, we're gonna actually basically just go with the chords from the chorus, but palm muted and a little bit of a chord shape, like this. Let's do the same thing with these takes. Give them a distinct color, trim them to the parts that we want, and then place them on the timeline where they belong. So what do we have so far? The chorus on its own is a little bit dull, so we're going to add a lead on top of it. Again, let's look at the fretboard and let's use the scale to help us which notes we're going to use. We're going to play it on the higher strings because we want it like a lead melody and it, we don't want it to compete with the riffs that are on the lower strings. It could sound something like this. Okay, now it's time to take care of the drums. Like I said in the beginning, the drum track that we made was just a metronome, something to make it easier to record the rhythm riffs. But as you can hear from the previous playback, uh, the drums don't really match the riff. Uh, they don't sound as they fit into the song or as if they're part of the same kind of rhythm. So what can we do with the drums? We'll start by isolating just a couple of bars of the drums um, to make it easier to work with. 
So let's cut out this part. And we'll glue this to make it non-repeated. And then we open it up in the MIDI editor. So this is what two bars of isolated drum pattern looks like in the MIDI editor. Um, one thing we could try is if a double bass, like more blast beat kind of drum pattern would fit with this riff. Um, to do that, we would set the grid to 16th notes, get more of these grid lines available. Uh, and then we'll shorten the ones we have and then we'll duplicate them. And we'll see what that sounds like. It's okay. I'm not sure it suits the riff perfectly. Um, how about we remove half of them? Uh, to make the bass hit at 8s instead. Okay, at least for me, this is a really good fit for the guitar rhythm. Um, to make this a little bit more human, we can humanize the velocities of the kick drums. So we mark them and we press H for humanize. And we choose to not change the timing, we'll just change the velocity. Something like this, 15%. Finally, we'll just add some um, symbol hits to make it a little bit more interesting. Maybe a little bit of variation with different symbols for each second hit. Uh, we can go to Crash B. Crash B is on the right side and Crash A is on the left, so then we get a bit more of a stereo pattern also to the drums. Okay. Good enough. Um, we'll probably return to this later on and do even more embellishing or changes. But for now, I think this is a good step forward for the drums. So let's extend this to the whole verse riff to see how it's working. Since we glued it to two bars, when we extend it, it's going to repeat every two bars. So let's play this section. Cool, but I think that the final part, um, the fourth bar, needs something special to accentuate those uh, guitar riffs. So let's cut that out and open that in the media editor. Here, I think it could be cool to add more snare hits to make it a more intense drum section. Uh, we'll also remove the cymbals for now. That, and we double the amount of snares. So we put them on one and three as well, not just two and four. Cool. And we can accentuate a little bit further with, um, with a bell. Here's the bell. We'll put the, those on the same ones as the snares. That's even better. So now we get this more intense drum riff for the more intense final fourth bar of the verse. So let's try them. Uh, together.
Okay, I hope you agree that um, this brings the, the rhythm riffs out in a completely new way. So let's copy this part um, to the second iteration of the verse and then see what we can do with the pre-chorus drums. My idea here is to basically just reuse that more intense pattern from the fourth bar of the verse, but instead of bells in between, uh, I think I'm going to put crashes on one and three, like this. Let's try it. Cool, and now what's left is the chorus. So for chorus drums, the chorus in itself, the riffs are a little bit more mellow, a little more, a bit slower, um, but that could actually work well with the double bass. So let's try the double bass again, but in this section. that works quite well actually so just let's add some symbols and then we'll extend this to the whole chorus now we can do the same thing that we did for the verse and put these on these alternate ones on B uh, maybe that will sound contrived later on and we'll change it but for now um, that's a good way of stereoizing the drums a little bit And we'll humanize the kicks like that. Okay, good. And um, let's extend that to the whole chorus. And have a listen to what the song so far sounds like with some um, fixed drum patterns. Cool. Um, we're probably, not probably, we're definitely gonna wanna add fills and variations to the drum patterns before the song is done, but let's leave that for a later stage. So I would say drums, phase one is done. The final major component of this song is bass. We're not going to do vocals this time. Um, the bass in the song is going to be a programmed MIDI bass. I will add a track template that I've made for bass. Um, there's a completely separate video that I made about metal bass that you can watch if you want to know how to do this. And we want this bass to go on the bottom. Um, and we'll start by making bass track 4 
um, the, the verse. Uh, so we'll mark these eight bars and we'll put a new MIDI item there. Um, we'll set the um, grid for eight notes because basically the whole rhythm track uh, for guitars is based on eight notes. And the easiest way of doing bass is just um, mimicking the notes of the guitar. Uh, in a metal song, the bass is supposed to be the low end of the guitars. So let's mimic that pattern as closely as possible. So first there are three repetitions of um, two pedal chugs on a loose lowest string, which on my guitar is a C, and one note on, uh, on a C one octave higher uh, on the neck, on the next string. And then two more chugs, and then um, one whole note lower. And then finally, two more pedal chugs, and then C sharp, so one up, and back to C. So this completes the first, like the first repetition of the verse, and then we know that that's going to be repeated uh, again over here. And it's almost going to be repeated here. Um, but then this note, the C sharp, is going even higher to here, a D sharp. Uh, we're going to solo the bass. And we can listen to this pattern. And then we have the final kind of descending run that's based on the same chugs. Like that. So this completes the base pattern for um, the verse riff. It sounds like this, played on its own. And when we play together with the drums and the, um, and the guitars, Add another repetition of this for the next uh, verse riff iteration. And then we will um, add the same, um, uh, with the same idea, we're going to add a part for the pre chorus. So we're just going to follow the guitar. Remember, those were the palm muted um, chords that are the same as in the chorus.
Now that we have the basic building blocks of the song, that is verse, pre-chorus and chorus recorded, we're going to start to arrange these into an actual song. To make it easier to handle these blocks, we're going to create regions. So a region is a, basically a grouping of tracks over a specified time. Create regions by marking a time, then create region, and we can edit the region to give it a descriptive name. So this is the verse region. Do the same for the pre-chorus and for the chorus. For me, a common arrangement of songs is to do first a verse and then the verse again. Um, then pre-chorus and a chorus. So that's the first part of the song. Since this is a song without lyrics or vocals, um, at this stage at least, I sometimes put another pre-chorus in between the two verses to make it a little bit more interesting. So we can just control or command drag to create a copy of the pre-chorus. So then we have the chorus and then I usually do verse, pre-chorus and then chorus again. Um, so this is a pattern that's basically from pop songs. Uh, it works well with mainstream metal. It's not creating any progressive metal or anything. That's usually a completely different song structure. After this, um, a new section will come, which is the bridge and the solo, uh, sometimes mer merged into one, like bridge slash solo. This section isn't recorded yet. We're going to do that as a next step. After that, another pre-chorus, a chorus, and then another chorus. So this is the basic structure of the song. Verse, pre-chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, bridge slash solo, pre-chorus, and then two choruses. I would say that the song also needs an intro that comes before the first verse and an outro that's after the last chorus. So we need three more sections recorded. An intro, a bridge slash solo and an outro. Let's do those now. For this song I'm not going to make a completely separate bridge. Uh, rather I'm going to make a rhythm pattern that's background for the solo. It's gonna be a palm muted version of the chorus, not exactly like the pre-chorus, more like a, a tension building repetition, um, something like this. And with the bridge in place, now the only thing that's remaining for the song is recording the solo. And I have to say, this is the worst part of the songwriting and tracking, if you ask me. I'm much better at rhythms than I am at leads, so trying to improvise something in the tempos that I play rhythm is usually super hard. So I almost always pre-write my solos, sometimes even on a keyboard. Um, then I map it out onto the fretboard of the guitar and I add like licks and, and small variations and stuff and practice it until I can get it right. Um, here's the solo for this song. Bridge and solo in place, all that we need is now an intro and an outro. I'm gonna make a super simple intro that's just a pick scrape and an outro that's just a bunch of power chords. And with those, everything we need for the song is um, ready. To finish the song, there are a bunch of steps uh, that I'm not going to go into 
uh, in this video. Stuff like mixing and mastering and EQing the guitars, maybe put some saturation on some of the tracks, etc. Um, but I feel this video is long enough and I want to thank you for sticking with it this long. Uh, I'm going to finish the video off with just playing the finished song in the state that it's in now. Uh, if you haven't already, maybe subscribe to the channel or just check back. There will be more videos coming soon. Bye for now.